This is the Seller Process Podcast, where we talk about the best systems, processes, and SOPs for your Amazon business so that you can regain control of your time, build up your team, and scale your e-com empire. Welcome to all change makers and entrepreneurs. This is Gianmarco in another episode of the Seller Process Podcast. Today, we brought to the mic Dave and Ryan. They are experts on creating processes to effectively run an Amazon business. And today we'll talk about how they set up and track their launches for sustainable growth. So Dave and Ryan are two Canadians living in Munich, running a US business together. Dave is an airline pilot flying the Airbus A350 across the globe for Europe's largest airline. Ryan has a PhD and is a research scientist working on groundbreaking mRNA technology. They joined forces two years ago and have in short time turned their e-commerce journey into a seven-figure business. Using the same structured methods used both in aviation and science, they organize and analyze their SOPs to continuously monitor and improve their business results. So guys, I'm happy to to welcome you here. Yeah, nice to be here. Thanks, John Marco. Yeah, thanks, John Marco. So great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys, for coming. So, guys, Dave and Ryan are the real deal when talking about systems for Amazon. They are basically spreadsheet masters. <laughs> and they <laughs> literally created a business out of it. They created multiple spreadsheets that they used to systematize their business and have full control of their numbers. So one of these sheets is called the launch tracker, which today we'll see how they're using it to successfully launch all their products. And also we'll tell you how you can steal a copy for your business. So guys, let's dive right in and uh, let's talk about your launch process. Where do you guys begin? What's the first steps? Yeah, um, I mean, our launch process starts even before we're actually launching the product. It starts way back at the keyword, uh, the product research step. You know, we want to make sure that there are keywords and search volume to support the product. So we're already doing keyword research, you know, quite early on. And this is nothing new, but we're, tr we're you know, building these keywords into lists um, and getting these keywords ready, you know, months in advance for our launch. So ahead of our launch, you know, we're thinking what, what keywords do we want to target and how can we break these up into manageable lists? And we break them up into, into these different phases. So we would start with like a, a phase one keyword list that is ultra relevant and then a phase two, that's a little more broad. And then a, a phase three list that is, you know, the, these really high search volume keywords that we want to go for. So really the launch process for us is all built around keywords and trying to solidify our keywords on or solidify our ranking on these keywords from phase one to phase two to phase three. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, how many keywords do you select for each phase? So th that's different per product, right? So a total keyword list for us could be anywhere up to 200, 250 keywords. What we try to focus on though is keywords that have significant search volume. For us, that's at least 300 search volumes a month or more. Uh, a great tool that we use other than Helium 10. So we use Helium 10, but we also use brand analytics. Uh, brand analytics uh, ensures us that it is searched on Amazon at least 10 times a day. So there's some search volume behind it. And then we split them up into the list and those could also vary in sizes. The list for us, like Ryan explained, depends essentially on relativity or um, relevancy. Relevancy. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, relevancy. <laughs> so the, the first one, it might actually only be four or five keywords. That's our phase one, but it's hyper relevant and we know we're going to convert on it. The important thing for our stage one of our launch is that we show Amazon that we convert. That's all we want. We don't care about if we get 10 sales on the first day. If we get two or three sales on day one, that's great. So we want to show Amazon continuous growth of our product, of our business with time, and that we convert very well. All right, I see. So then, so to summarize that, so you basically split all the keywords that you are looking to target into th three phases based on relevancy, right? And then you target the first uh, the first uh, set of keywords in phase one and then phase two and phase three, right? That's right. Or and and to give a more concrete example so that you know people listening can understand, if we're launching a product that's, let's say, a, a cat uh, tower, like a scratching tower that they can climb on, um, we're not going to target cat tower right away. It's just way too broad. we got to be way more specific. So if we're saying, listen, we've actually designed it to be a very modern look, so it's for a modern house, 
and we've designed it for bigger fat cats, right? So, um, what are they called? Chonkers, I think. I heard someone call chonkers, them right? So, we designed it for that. That's going to be a very specific. So, then our keyword won't be cat uh, tree, but it might be modern cat tree for large cats. So, it's a bit of a longer tail, but hyper relevant for the product that we're selling. And that'll be considered a phase one keyword, right? And then it'll, and then we can, you know, phase two might just be um, instead of a modern cat tree for large cats, it might just be the keyword with, that has a higher search volume of cat tree for large cats. And then phase three would just be cat tree. So that we're slowly working our way up to the broader keywords that have a bit more search volume. Got it. Yeah, makes sense. Absolutely. And do you care also about the keywords in the title? Because that's something that it's been debated with uh, several sellers. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, um, you know, it's some people might think you want to just put your ultra relevant keywords in the title. And that's absolutely true. But Dave and I believe that you should also put your, you know, your end goal keywords in the title, the, the big search volume keywords that you eventually see yourself landing on page one, you know, two, three, four months down the road. So, you know, if you're doing this cat tower, you know, yeah, you need cat tower, cat tree, these big uh, keywords with the big search volume in your title, because you need Amazon to start indexing you for this and, you know, consider you giving you ranking. So when we write our title, we're, you know, we're considering the big keywords that we want to land on and almost even putting those, you know, at the front of our title um, to give them as much weight as possible. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. So let's, let's move on with the, with this process, because obviously we can have a, a full, episode only on keyword research. So then what do you do next after choosing the, the keyword sets that you put in each phase? Okay. So then the nice thing is we have the Excel spreadsheet and we pre-populate them before the launch. Once they're set up, then we will actually take our phase one keywords and we'll put them into PPC so that as soon as our product is live, we can hit start on our PPC campaign. The way we set up our PPC campaign for the launch is to have a exact match only because we want to know what we're targeting. We set a high bid, so it's a very competitive bid, and we do it at a fixed bid. So we don't do down bid only or up and down. We do that. And that's how we start. And then um, as soon as the product is live, we'll you know give it a day to make sure that everything's okay with the listing, that the product is available. And then after a day, we will turn on our PPC campaign. All right. I see. And so do you, just to make sure I understood well, so the PPC campaign, it's only for those phase one keywords is that correct that is correct and we'll we'll probably even name the campaign either our core keyword list or launch list something like that and we believe ppc is very uh, volatile it changes quite a lot so we might take some keywords out later but that's after the launch for the launch we just have to get the product out there with high converting keywords i see i see in all this process so what's your take on price how do you set the price do you do you set a, a price like a launch price uh, that you, you you cut or you just go with uh, the the target final price yeah so we we actually have um different opinions on this and it depends on the product that we're launching so what we we don't like to launch products where it's going to be a price competition all the way down um, what we like to do is we like to when we select a product that review count doesn't really matter and that the price point doesn't really matter how do we do that we make sure that we solve a customer's problem with our product that we've I made a product so unique and different to the other competitors that you know the extra five dollars they're going to choose ours because it's so much different and better or presented better at least marketed better so for our starting point, the first day or two, we actually set it at the absolute end price that we want to sell at. Okay, so it's actually full price for two days. We try to get one or two sales. We do understand with zero reviews, it might be hard to get a sale, but we'll track it and we're monitoring it. And if we get those you know, two days worth of sales and could be just four or five sales, we're then going to drop it either five or $10. And the reason why we do that is because then we'll most likely get a strike through from Amazon to say $5 off. And that will be our launch price for the rest of the launch. Okay, so we kind of try to trick the system to get a strike through. And because we don't have sales data, two days of sales is actually enough to get the strike through. So it only works during the launch. Um, if during the first two days, that price was too aggressive and too high and we didn't get any sales, we'll be patient for two days. If after that we notice that, then we'll drop it to the, to the launch price that we wanted originally anyway, and then we just won't have a strike through. Right, right. That's smart, actually, guys. So remember that that's actually a very interesting strategy in order to have the strike through price that everybody you know would like to to have i think it it, it should increase conversion and it increases it and you don't have to pay for it john marco right you're not running a coupon and you're not running a discount 
So it's actually pretty nice. It's a free strike through, and all you have to do is be patient for two days and hopefully get the sale. All right, great, great advice, great advice number one. <laughs> so so far, we'll put this in in the <laughs> to make sure that people really do that. All right, so so when your magic launch tracker starts to to when you start using the the launch tracker uh, in this process. Yeah, yeah, I mean. We really see, so on day one of the launch, we're already using the launch tracker. You know, um, if anyone, if you're all familiar with Seller Central, you have tons of data spread all over the place. You know, you have business reports, you have your PPC, um, the campaign manager, um, you, and you, you have a lot of data points that are spread all over. And the idea of our launch tracker is to bring everything into just a simple, single place where you can get a glance at all of your key metrics. So we have, you know, we want to be typing in our unit session percentage, how many um, organic sales we got, how many PPC sales we got, um, external ad spend, these kind of metrics. And then we're going to calculate, you know, some, some extra things for you in this launch tracker, um, such as your, your organic to paid ratio. Um, or yeah, we're going to be able to track your review count if you put in your reviews as well. And the idea of the, of the launch tracker um, is really a diary or a journal is how we look at it. And not only so you can track your launch in real time um, with real data points from Amazon, but you can go back later on down the road when you want to say, oh, I need to launch a new product. How did I launch my last one? And how did that launch go? Do I need to do exactly the same thing or do I need to change something? So we use it not only for launching, but also for, for relaunching. You know, uh, I think it's a common problem now to have products go out of stock and you know, not only for a couple of days, but maybe for a month <laughs> or longer. And you're suddenly looking at a relaunch of a product from you know, scratch. You have to re-rank it and re-index it. So yeah, we, we go back and, and look at how we, we launched the last product and track the new one as well. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it's really the way to go, I think. Uh, really, now launches are getting more and more difficult. So if you don't really take the extra effort to really track and follow all your numbers, you will be left behind. Also because, um, yes, uh, the, the, it's, it's becoming more, much more difficult. So that, that's the, the whole thing. So uh, there, there is more competition. So you really need to be on top of your numbers. That's like really kind of rule number one for, for selling on Amazon and actually in any business. So it, al it allows you to make an informed decision as well, right? Um, it allows you to see an impact that a price increase may have. And we feel if you're just running on the seat of your pants, you know what I mean, and making ad hoc changes that you're guessing, you're not experimenting. So we like to run experiments. We like to do it, track it, see if that, how, the, how did that change impact our end result? Absolutely, absolutely. Running experiments in the in the scientific way, like like exactly. a PhD. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we got, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, guys, in the launch tracker, there are two tabs. There is there is an, one tab that has a, a very interesting chart that it's not often uh, spoke about. Uh, this uh, you you call it the visibility score, right? What what is that, and how do you how can you use it to better track the the launch performance? Yeah, so this is honestly the most exciting tab that we have on all of our spreadsheets. Um, it's our favorites. The people that have gotten our sheets, they love it as well. And it's because it's completely unique. Uh, there's no other software right now doing it. So what we do essentially is we take the raw data from Helium 10. We use their keyword tracker. What their keyword tracker does, it essentially takes a snapshot every day of your organic rank on a keyword that you've put into the track. You can even add a booster to get an hourly snapshot of where were you organically on that keyword. Um, what we like to do is we like to now split up these keywords into our list and track the entire list at once and see how it evolves over our launch period of about 35 days. And then we've added, like you mentioned already, a visibility score. Now, what the visibility scores is essentially gives us an insight into how likely is it that our organic rank is getting visibility. So as we all know, if we're not on page one on Amazon, you know, we're, we're missing out because about 70% of the people don't leave page one on Amazon. And those numbers are from Amazon directly. So the way we designed our visibility score was to say, okay, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a formula that Ryan came up with himself. So it's a proprietary formula, but essentially it ensures that, you know, it's not a linear decline in visibility, that if you're organic rank one, hundred percent of the people are going to see you. And then it drops as you go. And it, it's more of an exponential curve. Yeah. To drop it's, off. it's really built around the idea that if you're the, as your ranking drops, 
it's from one to two to three, you know, down to 40 and beyond, your visibility score will drop as well. Um, and we use it to create this graph that you brought up, which we love because it's a great visual representation of how your launch is going because we're able to take an entire keyword list, as Dave mentioned, and take all the organic ranks for all of those keywords for the, you know a period of, of days or weeks and then essentially boil this down into one graph that shows you how your visibility on all of these keywords has evolved over that time. And you can clearly see you know, peaks and dips that correspond to maybe price increases or a coupon that you ran or a new review coming in. Or an Amazon glitch, right? So <laughs> it, it'll warn you if you're running your launch tracker, even for a relaunch and you see, oh, there's something happened. And it could just be, you know, Amazon had a glitch. They moved you into the wrong category. You lost your bestseller rank. I mean, we've all heard these horror stories. And our launch record, because we use them all the time, even after launch, we use them essentially every month we fill these out. It gives us then a good insight, uh oh, something happened to our listing. Absolutely, absolutely. This is really the, I think, the, the smartest way to go about in any launch. Definitely, you have to track every relevant number in your of your of your launch and that's uh, as you said that's the the way to make informed decisions mm -hmm. and really like when you when you create a coupon you will see maybe an increase in conversion or if you see a drop in ranking you will see also a drop in unit sessions stuff like that right so you, you can kind of create um situations in which if this happened, then do that, right? So if unit session percentage goes down, then it means that you have to work maybe on the main image or, or put out a coupon or try to get the, the strike through price, right? So it gives you, it gives you basically a roadmap to, to act on, right? That's, that's very useful. And uh, so that's, that's about the launch tracker. Right. And what is a, what about the next steps in the launch phase? So you target those keywords through through PPC. And mm -hmm. so now what? How do you move to how and when do you move to the second phase? Yeah. So because we have the launch tracker tracking organic rank, we actually wait until their phase one is stabilized into about the top 14 organic positions. And the nice thing is, is we're only running PPC on those keywords. And our launch tracker will actually demonstrate, and everyone talks about the halo effect, that if you get sales on a couple of keywords, you're going to start getting ranking on very similar keywords through a halo effect, and those are going to increase. And our launch tracker shows it live, right? Because you're only targeting PPC on your core list. Your other lists are prepared, and you're also tracking their ranking. And Helium 10's lowest rank that they have is 307. That means it's not found organically. They stop looking for you, okay? Um, which is very generous that they go that far anyway. <laughs> but you'll see on the you know phase two and phase three words on the first couple of days, they'll probably stay at 307 the entire time. And after about a week or two, you're going to see them start moving up, even though you've never targeted them with PPC. And the reason is because you're getting sales on the phase one keywords, and they're most likely related in some you know form or another to the phase two and phase three. So what we do is once our phase one is secured organically, and we know those are fine, we do not turn off PPC yet, but we turn on PPC on our phase two and have them run parallel. And then after that, once we see phase two has a good uh, position, we'll do phase three. Now, we don't like to teach strategies because we feel that strategies have to be like the best strategy, right, is the one that is real time and it's adapted to the situation, to the marketplace, to the time of year, mm -hmm. right, and to the product. So but what we teach is that if you use your own data that's well presented to you, you can make informed decisions. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I'm curious to, to understand from your experience launching several products, how long did it take you to, to go from phase one to phase two and complete the launch? And, and at what point do you say, okay, this launch, it's, it's done and now it's, uh, it's like a product Every like product. any other? Well, our, uh, the sheet is for 35 days because we've noticed it's about a four-week honeymoon period, what they kind of call it. Mm -hmm. And what we've noticed the honeymoon period is, is just a jumping of organic rank quite often throughout a day. So that's all it is. Is Amazon doesn't know how well you're going to convert on a product. They're going to give you a, you know, a, a, a shot at it. So they're going to rank you organically onto page one. You didn't even pay to be there, but they want to see, are you converting? That's the honeymoon period. You're jumping quite a bit. Um, and the reason why we know it lasts about four weeks um, is because you'll most likely see a drop of those jumps to the top pages after about four weeks. That means the honeymoon is over, right? They know what your product is. They know on what keywords you're converting. They know what kind of customers are buying your product. So they're not going to give you, you know, a, another shot at the big league. You got to earn it now. So it's about four weeks for us. 
We've also noticed that uh, lately some of our products didn't get a honeymoon period at all. And we've done the same set of like, we try to suppress your listing beforehand and then we're launching our product at the same time as another one. One got, got a honeymoon period because we're seeing a like, great indexing, jumping up and down on organic. And the other one is stuck at 307 for like two, three days of sales. It's only breaking through on the keywords that we're targeting with our PPC. So we're like, okay, this is going to require a lot more effort. And to launch a product that doesn't have that honeymoon period for whatever reason, takes a lot longer to get onto page one. Mm, yeah, that's interesting. And that's really probably up to the Amazon algorithm. I mean, there is no way to, to trick that, I guess. Or, exactly. Or... So, I mean, and then the only, I mean, how we normally try to secure the honeymoon period, and this is a strategy a lot of people use is when they create the listing originally, they don't upload a main image and they set the launch date and the release date to the future. So very, very far in the future. So we don't actually do it until Amazon has received, received our stock and it's available. They'll end up being stranded inventory. And as we see, okay, now we have you know, 15, 20 units stranded. That's, let's say, two, three days of sales. Then we will change the release date and the launch date to the current date. And as of that point, you can find the product that's live. So that is day one of the product. If you set up your uh, listing when you know, you're trying to make your barcodes at the manufacturer level, by the time it reaches Amazon, it's about six months. That means the algorithm has seen your listing for about six months. You might not even have it optimized yet. And your honeymoon period is over. So what we're assuming is the products that us, that we launched that missed the honeymoon, perhaps when we saved the date, there was a glitch or we hit save too early or something like that. It could have been our fault, but normally to secure the honeymoon, we just put the launch date all the way into the future and it normally works. Yeah. And speaking about glitches, something that uh, has happened, you know, quite frequently or lately in Amazon. Um, these are really cool to go back to the launch tracker after the fact and see like, what did that glitch do to our ranking? And sometimes you can actually see clearly in, in you know, tons of keywords, you just see a complete change in their ranking for a few days. Sometimes they recover after a few days, sometimes not. But when you're on top of your rankings uh, with, a, with a keyword or a launch tracker like this, it, you can actually see what these glitches are doing to your listings and whether they're you know, having a, a huge impact. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Uh, absolutely. Guys, I would say this is gem number two <laughs> for today. <laughs> okay. So this is something that really people can can use uh, how to basically secure uh, the honeymoon period for the for the product. That's that's very interesting. I, I, I knew already the strategy of uh, putting the, um, the launch date to a later date, but I never actually made, a, made the product suppressed so that you know, there is not that, that point in time in which there is the, the, the product available, but like coming soon, right? Right, it, it'll, so if it says inactive out of stock, it's not suppressed. So that means it knows your listing, it's doing its analytics, it's running you know, the keywords, it's looking at you already and starting to get an idea of what kind of product you should be. So what you want it to say, if, it, if it's suppressed correctly, it'll say it's new now. It literally changed last week. It says now search suppressed. And it used to just say listing suppressed, right? Um, so if it says search suppressed, your listing is, it's not in the search. It's not, they're not looking for you with the algorithm. So you're not starting to get indexed at all. And then your honeymoon period stays secured. Okay, I see, I see. So we have to look for search suppressed. Yeah, and the only way you can do that, you have one shot. The first time you create the listing, the very first time you create the listing, you have to put in a title that's required. You do not have to upload any images. So don't upload any images. Don't, not yet. And all there's three dates to worry on, on the offer page and the further details. And there's three dates and all dates that you find on this listing page, it doesn't matter, put them all to the future, six months into the future, pick your lucky date. <laughs> and I think some categories actually have like four dates. So yeah. it depends on the category you're doing, but yeah, definitely those dates and no images. <laughs> and then once your product is at Amazon, ready to go, you upload your pictures, you know, you make sure everything is clean. The title is hard to change. So it does make sense to put in the right title at the beginning. Sometimes it doesn't allow you to change the title, but then we make sure our bullet points are still perfect. The search terms are up to date with the current search volumes. Um, and then we set all the dates to today. Awesome, awesome, guys. So this is this is another great uh, tip uh, for for your next launch. So keep in mind that. And guys, so before we we say goodbye, we, we're kind of running out of time. I'm I, I would like to to understand uh, during the the process of refining the launch tracker. I'm sure you you experienced a lot of. Uh, you, you made some mistakes probably, or you learned mm -hmm. something from, from the creation of this basically dashboard uh, in, in a spreadsheet that helps you with the launches. So, so can you share what, what have you learned in this, in this process and what, what's the mistakes that people can, uh, can avoid doing? 
Yeah, I mean, like one one like, a thing that the launch tracker really points out is mistakes in our keyword strategy or our PPC strategy sometimes, or um, listing writing. So you, we might see entire blocks of keywords that have never broken through an organic ranking. They're just consistently 307 and, and we're, we're not even ranking. And if we dive deeper into these keywords, we might realize that they all have the same word in them. Maybe, maybe you know, kitten. Uh, instead of cat, you know, and where we realize we're not ranking on anything kitten and it's just 307 across the board. And then we say, ah, maybe we forgot to put kitten in our listing and it's a sign that we should go back and do it. So this was something that we didn't, we didn't design or think about when we were designing the launch tracker. It's something we just noticed after the fact, like, oh, it's actually pointing out keywords that we've missed completely. And it doesn't, they're really easy to spot because they're just flashing red at you. you know? yeah. yeah. And a couple of things that the first tab will also tell us um, is price changes. So at the beginning, we used to, as soon as we got a couple sales, because <clears throat> we used to launch very price aggressively, we used to up the price, jump it by five bucks to try to get more profit. And we would see almost an immediate drop in rank. So we recognize that the system doesn't like quick price changes because we would see almost immediately a, a drop in rank across the board. Um, so it was a very uniform you know, reaction to our input. So we decided now we just start with the high price, get the strike through, and then keep it very consistent for at least four, five, six weeks during the launch. Uh, that would be one mistake to avoid is changing your price too quick. And the last uh, mistake that I, I would recommend people avoid is when they do turn on PPC, don't turn it on too fast, too big. You know, don't start with an auto campaign. Don't start with a phrase or a broad. I mean, we hear these, you know, advice all the time and we're like, I don't think they understand how ranking works or keywords work because what happens is we want to tell the algorithm what kind of product re search result pages we show up on. We want to tell them where people should find us, what we are. We know our product, right? And we're going to do an exact match only and we're going to tell it the keywords and we're going to start with that, lead with that. If we lead with an auto, Amazon's going to guess, well, maybe it's a cat tree, uh, maybe it's a pet toy. So let's just put it for pets. And I mean, the algorithm's getting smarter, but still, if we want to say, look, we know specifically we're only a cat tree or a cat tower for large cats that's modern, we're going to start with that. So we suggest no auto campaigns at the beginning, no phrase or no broad. There will be time later. Just start with an exact match and really don't turn on too much at once because what happens is PPC normally converts less than organic. It's just the way it is, right? The customer behavior, you click on top, ah, next one, you still window sh shopping. Um, and that'll hurt your unit session percentage. And we've also noticed that organic sales help ranking better than PPC sales. So, you know, just not too much PPC at the beginning. You don't need it. Do focused and not too much. All right, guys, we, we made it. Three times <laughs> done. In, two, <laughs> in 20 minutes, we got three gems. So this is actually something that really people hear, you know, the, the opposite, usually the, the, the opposite suggestion. It's, it's the one that uh, it's more, most common, you know, starting with, uh, with an auto campaign. But actually, it, it totally makes sense, you know, based on what you just said. You know, you have to train the, algor the, the algorithm to, to understand your, your product because you know what product it is, but Amazon doesn't know yet. So they kind of put you in several different spots, which many times are not relevant. So you are losing money and also kind of confusing, you know, in a way, the, exactly. the algorithm. Right. And we've all seen it. You type in garlic press and an <laughs> apple slicer pops up and you're like, that's not right. <laughs> you don't want to be that guy. You want to be the guy who's telling Amazon where to show your product. You can, you can only do this approach if you've done your keyword research up front. So I think the reason why so many people recommend auto is they say, go find the keywords that way. But we have the tools nowadays. We pay for them. We pay for, let's say, Helium 10 or Jungle Scout, Zons Guru. All, they all tell you keywords. If you're brand registered, you have brand analytics that's straight from Amazon. So just do the homework up front and then you don't have to pay for that research. You have it up front and then just target it. Yeah. Yeah, great. I mean, there's so many more things I'd love to talk about, <laughs> right? Like even the, w one last thing like to warn people is if people sell PPC uh, software or firms or you know that's their job and they tell you to do more PPC, it's because they that's their job, right? And they want it to be the number one way to rank is PPC. Um, what they don't talk about is, is PPC cannibalization, right? Like how many of your sales would have been organic if you didn't run PPC so aggressively and be right beside it? If you're organically already in the top three and the PPC is right next to it and you're paying four or $5 a click, how many of those sales would have bought it organically? The regular customer doesn't understand the difference between the little sponsored thing to the organic one. He'll just click the first one he sees. And if they're side by side or on the same row, 
chances are some of those could have been organic. So a good way to save on, you know, eight costs and tacos is to track your keywords, the ranking organically, see where you're at. How long have you been there? Is it secured organically? We're not telling you as soon as you hit organic one to turn it off, but if you've been there organically four or five weeks and it's consistent, then it might be worth to really lower the bid to not be top of search PPC, just get the organic sale on top. And if someone misses you on top, you want to be at the bottom maybe, right? So PPC strategy, in our opinion, is just to complement your organic game. But the real game on Amazon, the only one that you can make profit on is the organic one because you're not paying it. It's free rent. Absolutely. And the people that give a lot of advice are the people that are selling their PPC stuff. So just be always careful who you listen to. That's our opinion. <laughs> Absolutely, guys. And we, we are the, the honest ones. We, we don't have... I mean, yeah, we're trying to sell the organic <laughs> ranking. So don't even trust <laughs> us, right? <laughs> our interest is to... to... You make money. That's all. Uh, and and you know what? It, PPC, it just you know, Jeff Bezos makes money, and Amazon makes money, and uh, it's such a tough game. And if we can just you know, the margins are getting tighter, the shipping cost, logistics, competition. I mean, we all know it. We're feeling the squeeze. And if we can just get the organic game a bit tighter and better, you can actually make profit on Amazon. Absolutely, yeah, totally agree. And I really have to stop you guys, otherwise <laughs> you are gonna bombard us with <laughs> very interesting things, which. Uh, I'll be very glad to go over in other episodes, definitely in the future. Yeah, so let's good. let's stop for now. And I think yeah. this this was really a, a great value packed episode. And let's let's just tell now how people can can grab their own version of the launch tracker. So they will actually find uh, uh, the um, link to download the launch tracker, which now I think it sells. You, you guys sell it for over $40, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so the launch tracker itself, we're selling for $45. We do have a package of 10 sheets that, you know, because we're just starting out with that side business to our side business, right? Like uh, we're doing a, a starter fee. It's $200 with life that includes lifetime updates because Amazon changes the reporting. And well, if we update the sheets because we use them ourselves, we'll send you the update as well as soon as we update the sheet. So $200, you get all 10 sheets um, that we have. If you don't want the live updates uh, or the lifetime updates, it's $150 right now. Uh, it's a limited time offer because we're just starting out. Once we get a bit more you know, set up doing that, then the prices will go up. Definitely. And uh, you guys have a um, special offer also for, for the Seller Process Podcast listeners, right? So they can they can get the um, the spreadsheets for 10% off, right? That's right. Yeah. So you can get 10% uh, off. And uh, like you mentioned before, the launch tracker, the one, our favorite one, to be honest, that we've been talking about here, uh, we're actually giving it away for free to the listeners. Also limited time. But if you're listening to this podcast, hey, you know, send us, uh, click the links, and then we'll be able to uh, get to the launch tracker. Great. Sounds great. So guys, you will really find it super, super useful. Go grab your copy of the launch tracker on the sellerprocess.com. You will find it, the link in the show notes of this episode, and you will just be able to download it for free. And if you will enjoy it, which I'm sure you will, you can go back and uh, uh, purchase the, the whole set of, of spreadsheets or the ones that you, you just prefer. Right, so guys, remember to to get it because it's a it's a limited offer. I mean, he he's definitely not going to to give it away for free forever. So guys, as soon as you you listen this, uh, make a note and go go download it on the sellerprocess.com website. So guys, again, thank you very very much for sharing this this value bombs with us, and uh, I, I really hope to see you next time to share to share more of them. All right. It sounds good. We're happy to be here. Absolutely. Look forward to it. Thanks. Cheers. Yeah. See you soon, guys. Changemakers, I hope you enjoyed the show and learned something from the interview. I like to leave you with my favorite quote. Remember, we don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our systems. You will not reach your targets just because you set them. You will reach your targets because you have implemented systems in your business that allow you to reach those targets. Burn that in your mind. And what I'd like you to do is to go grab the free resources of this episode on the sellerprocess.com and work to keep systematizing your business and creating better processes. And I'll see you in the next episode.